Be right back. Started late, I've already signed. Be right back. Fucking hell. Uh, let's see. So I can actually get the YouTube stream uh, comments up. It's, I don't know how long this stream's going to be for. Um, I'm just very bored after getting my uh, second V word today. So I thought I'd do a bit of a live and have a bit of a celebratory drink. Even though I've got a weekend off, so I could have just saved myself, but life's too short. Life is just too short. Uh, evening Craig, if you're still here, because uh, I am running 10 minutes late. Uh, it happens uh, quite a lot. And uh, we've got Adam. But yeah, evening, Craig. Hope you're doing well. We've got Adam says, evening, you managed to get in 10 seconds before a late. So I'm not that late. Um, I got a bit carried away on Fallout 3, so I do apologise. And we've got Vanessa Kitty, who says, hi. And I can see on my YouTube thread that, oh, that's popped up. At least I'm getting the same amount of comments on each one. Uh, I've got James, who says, A up. A up, James. And that post you tagged me in, I had no idea that place exists in Manchester. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a Scandinavian-themed bar and restaurant. Although, come to think of it, I'm sure someone like Adam or Rob have brought that up to me. But, James, thank you for tagging me at that. We, it's a place we shall definitely hit up um, when we have our impending alcoholic beverage consumption session. So, uh, let's see. And then Craig says, evening. Evening, Craig. Sorry uh, if you're waiting around a little. For the start of the stream and then james says newbie bar looks quite smart it certainly does i like the aesthetic of it i like the the, the tap menu and uh, some of the food stuff looks very interesting uh manchester a cultural hot spot so bit of an impromptu stream um went to get my second fuck i'm just gonna say it vaccination i'm not you know giving any sort of um scientific information out so there's no grounds for me having my channel shut down it's not like i'm giving misinformation or anything like that but um yes yeah, so i'm my second dose today and uh, while i was in town i thought you know what? i'll hit up the and uh, there he is the man himself it says evening gold drake I'm reading them off there so it saves me getting dead close to the camera. Evening, sir. Hope you're doing well. And Adam says, Oh, before me, mine is a week on Monday. And uh, Goldrake says, Careful, you'll be cancelled. Yes. But um, yeah, I'm a second dose of the. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, arms, a little bit achy. As to be expected, um, but no sort of effect so far. The voice in my head have stopped, which is always a plus point. But that hunger to kill will always be there. But um, yeah, what are you drinking and where are you from? Says Craig H. Well, whilst I was there and on my way back, I thought I'd pop into Tesco's in Wigan and uh have a look what they've got uh they finally in the wigan uh tesco's although it's been a little while since i've been there and they didn't have it last time i was there uh, they have that cloud water and friends box for 10 quid and uh, the great thing about them actually stocking it now is i can blanket in person because from what i've heard all four beers in that box are fucking shit. And from some of the other cloud water stuff I've had in the supermarket, don't really want to 
spend 10 quid just to be disappointed. Um, I'm sure there are some houses in Skelmsdale where that £10 can probably lead to a woman being disappointed, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Uh, let's see, I'm having a Warsteiner, Warsteiner, Warsteiner now. Just got back to the pub with a few friends. It was my birthday yesterday. Of course it was. Happy birthday for yesterday. And uh, I think you were having a bit of a, a bit of a beer binge, weren't you? Um, purchasing wise. Well, I hope you had a damn good birthday, and I hope you're going to continue the celebrations over the weekend. You mean cloud dog? Yes, or dog water. Uh, but I'm not here to shit on breweries. Um, I did a review earlier this evening of um, Beaver Town's Gamma Ray. And uh, you're going to be shocked, but I actually thought it was all right. Uh, no, it's actually quite good. Not, not as good as I remember um, it being. Far from it. But still tasting all right. Um, can't remember the last time you had a can before that, but the last can before that was a little bit ropey, so I think it's all, all depends on uh, the batch and the can. It's all like brew dog, really. Uh, friends and friendly brew dog box, utter shite. Yeah, I'm just not wasting 10 quid. Um, Although, that being said, Faith is 8 quid for a 4-pack. So, price-wise, I don't know. So, if, uh, No, I'm not, I'm not going to buy it, especially with one of them being non-alcoholic. What the fuck? Is, what's the fucking point? I get what they're doing with the box and the, the brews involved. I, I get it. I get it, okay. I understand, but... <sighs> I just want semi-decent beer so if wanted a cloud water from the supermarket i get the uh the collaboration that they did with brew dog uh cold drake says yes i'm celebrating mostly this weekend very good craig says the cancel drinker and then gold drake responds with aka the base drinker although I'm always trying to, on the outside, it looks like I'm just trying to be the edgelord drinker, but I'm, I don't have the uh, the intelligence to uh, come up with any witty jokes to become an edgelord. I'm good at edging, though. And uh, as Adam said, locally, 20 quid, they'll pretend to be impressed. Oh, the sex talk's already happened. Just had the Brewdog first Mickler, and it was quite good. See, I'm interested in that as well. So, picked up two cans, well, picked up a few, picked up uh, two bottles of Paolana Munich Hellas and that, is it Tatley's Lager? That's sort of similar to a cold Kush, Kush style, because uh, it's like three for six quid. Um, picked up a can of Gamma Ray and um, I also picked up a can of Faith. Although, I'm sure I picked up two cans of it. Probably not. And, uh, yeah, picked up Northern Star, because it's been a while since I've had that. And then these two cans that I'm going to be drinking tonight. So, I think Adam might have actually uh, given me a can of this previously. Can't remember if I've recorded a review. Um, but, to be honest, the, the recording of reviews has been pretty sparse as of late, as you've probably seen by the fact that content doesn't have a full title, has no description, and has no thumbnail. But um, I, I need to get back onto that. Now I've got the Electric Bear Pale from Marks and Spencers. Overcarbonated is an understatement. It was nearly 100% not bad poor. Uh, if only I had a decent pair of headphones, wireless and noise cancelling are two musts for me. Definitely, because why would I want to hear somebody else's bullshit when I'm trying to listen to music? And I didn't, I didn't give a can of that, as I haven't had it myself yet. I don't know, I might have picked this up. I know you gave me the a can of the Faith and Futures, if I remember correctly. But yeah, anyway, regardless, 
one of the many beers that Adam has graciously given me over the, the past year or so. Still haven't properly been able to return a favour, and I do still owe you money for um, the uh, takeaway. And much more. Um, but yeah, so this is Eternal Haze Double Dry Hot IPA, 8% ABV, brewed with Stig I know that's not how you pronounce it. James should be here to uh, correct my mispronunciation. But he isn't. Yeah, Fay Futures, which was good. Yeah, I, I like that. I think I did actually review that. For fuck's sake, this swap my road's got a shitty scooter and keeps driving up and down the road. It's been... I'm surprised there's no... Because the weather's been nice. I'm surprised we haven't had gobshites going up and down, Neil. But mind you, they only do that like 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, this was a nice surprise to see. I didn't even realise that this was going into supermarkets. And this is brewed by numbers, India Pale Ale, Amarillo and Citra, 6%. But yeah, cans are, are sweating, ice cold. Well, they're not ice cold, but it is what it is. So shall we start with uh, brewed by numbers number five, IPA. And then, just looking at the comments, Tote Serial says, nice haul. Why, thank you, Tote. And a good evening to you. So we'll pour the brew by numbers first. There we go. Oh, it certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Uh, Mambo number five. God, that just reminds me of school discos. That song. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice indeed. Soft, citrusy, pillowy. It's got gap. Yeah, it's gap. It's got that like kind of. It's got sort of like cheap watermelon gummy sweets. On the aroma. A little bit tropical, a little bit citrus. There's a slight, like, almost basil like character coming through. A couple of comments, so I will address it. We've got terror. Quick beer reviews. <laughs> I read the comment before I actually read it out. Uh, good evening, Terry. Hope you're doing well. Blimey, it's Grizzly Adams. I'll take it. It's better than being called from Kimbaraj Johnson. So. <laughs> but even to you, sir. And uh, yeah, I prefer the Marks and Spencer 05 on Tesco. However, that new Talis 05 from Hop House was the best one I've had so far. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was really nice. That was one of the, the, the beers of the shirt. Mainly because we didn't really drink as much as we probably should have. But that's rich of me saying that because I've, I'd hit a wall by about an hour in. I don't know what was up with me that night, Adam. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I hadn't drank that much. But it just hit. It, I think it's because I've been working for the two days and going into Liverpool on both nights. That's my excuse anyway. Uh, Tote Sarah says a little bit of Monica. All right, Bojo says Gold Drake. Not big super beer market, uh, supermarket beer for ages, says Craig. I'm at that point now where funds are a little bit low, um, so I can't commit to a proper you know beer hall, although I think my next one is going to be a very um, German-centric um, haul from... Trembling Madness, just because they've got a lot of Doppelbox on at the moment, and I'm picking up a few um, for James. Uh, I saw the US Brewery list for Anxious Craft Beer Festival. You need to come on Saturday night session. I'll have to try and work that out. Do they? Because I know Indie Man did, where like, if you didn't make it in time, you had like, about an hour to actually get into the festival after it had started. So 
are they operating the same sort of um, system? Because I'd only be getting into Manchester anyway about seven at, at a push. Uh, we've had to get ready and going back and forth then getting so i've been having an absolute nightmare with buses and trains in the past couple of days probably tired that that's what happens to me uh craig says yeah just dropped near 100 quid on trembler madness well i'm getting paid on the 21st so i might i might usually with trembler madness i just get to that 70 quid so you get free delivery but i'm going to push the boat out but i don't know if i can because i need to buy a train ticket for london I need to make sure I've got 200 odd quid for me hotel set aside. And obviously I need money for Manchester as well. So, but I'll still probably spend 100 quid on Tremor Manners. Uh, gotta love some good doppel box, says Paul. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, what a, tr what a travel log that would be. Um, me, James and Paul having a Doppelbock road trip around Germany. That would be like the top gear of beer. I think that would be a good idea that, for a series. Why aren't a craft beer channel doing that? Like a road trip around Germany sampling Doppelbocks. Uh, let's see. Adam says, happy to split an order on Trebling Madness. I'll hold you to that, actually. Um... So that would be good because I'm just pretty much getting Doppelbox. Doppelbox road trip would be awesome, says Paul. Uh, Matt Binks, evening Matt Binks, says, I'm late, did I miss anything? It's a clueless drink of live stream. You'll never miss anything because nothing happens. Um, no, we've just been talking. I've not even got into taste in the first beer yet. Uh, not too sure on time entry. I'll check website. Rob's coming now as well as I think he got a trade ticket. Nice. Um, what beer do I have with fish and chips? Then Sierra Nevada, Baker, Budva, or Francis Carner. Joe, you know just because I've been fit and I'm kicking myself, didn't pick up a few bottles. I'm thinking Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Let that citrusiness sort of like cut through the fish and the starchiness of the chips. Call it top beer, exactly. And not as late as me, says Cheshire Own Brew. Good evening, sir. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've got some nice brews on the go. I've been really caught up with the home brews for a while. And I think I say that every time a home brewer joins the uh, the chat. But yeah, hope everyone hope everyone's doing well this evening. I hope everyone's got a good weekend planned. And then of course it's Freedom Day afterwards. We'll see just how much freedom we get. We're not going to delve too much into that uh, type of discussion though, because don't want to get my cut, don't want to get my channel closed down. But this is smelling really, really nice. It's got, I don't know, it's almost got a slight passion fruit character, which I'm, I've grown to despise passion fruit in beer. See, great minds think alike, Goldrake. I'm gutted I didn't pick up a couple of bottles of pale ale from Sierra Nevada. Although I wanna I wanna try that like um official Sierra Nevada website now. Or what's that um American web well UK website that does like founders, Sierra Nevada and all that sort of stuff. Because I wanna get as fresh as possible like what is usually easy to get hold of American yeah, heritage craft hashtag heritage craft but um yeah just love i'd love just like a can or a bottle of sierra nevada pale ale at its like prime do you know what i mean i love that beer even dodgy bottles that have been kept terribly in supermarkets and have been sh shat on the shelf yeah literally shat on the shelves for like half a year past the shelf life not even those bottles will put me off. And I've never had it out of a can. I think I've been sniffing this beer for about 15 minutes now. Beer hop stuff won't be fresh now. Ah, okay. That makes sense. 
Cascade Club or Beer Hop? I hadn't heard of Cascade. Oh, excuse me, Cascade Club. Freedom, we shall say exactly. Exactly. Oh, we, we all know that we're going to be put back into some form of controlled experiment three months down the line. Anyway, smells good. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Mm. Not much on the intake. A little bit of a medicinal finish. Nice body to it. Tell you what, there's not much flavour in this. I'm just getting the, the residual characteristics of hops as opposed to flavours from the hops. You can tell citrus in there, but you have to really try and pick out the flavours. Ah, that's what their shop's called, Cascade. Yeah, I want to do an order from them. And with that, the clueless drinker cancelled, says uh, Matt Binks. Because beer is medicine. It is. Cura of all ills. Of physical and mental ailments. And it can momentarily mend a broken heart, but then make you want to rip it out the next day because you're fucking hanging like fuck. I've never actually drank to cope with a situation, by the way. Not that I'm, I'm throwing shade on people who unfortunately do. This is conscientious drinker coming out. But um, I just, I've just never, never ever seen that as a way of dealing with stuff, mainly because it might sort of take your mind off it at the time, but then I'd imagine it, whatever you go through will just come crashing down even more the next day because you're hungover. So... Um, Although that that slide, there have been times where I've uh, decided to have a drink because I'm a little bit sad, but it's just human nature, isn't it? So I'm really satisfied about beer, and you're a little bit pissed off. It's a little bit late on. You're thinking about stuff, just a beer, a cigarette, yeah. and then you just go to sleep. Sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, let's see. Good evening. Good evening, Craig. I'll be seeing you uh, in a week and a day. No, week and two days. I think. Uh, dates and math is not my thing. But evening, I'll see you in Manchester is essentially what I would say. Uh, if you can have medical marijuana, surely you can have medical beer. I'll drink to that and I'll drink to some medical marijuana if anybody's got some to to cope with the the stiffness of my arm where i've been uh jabbed obviously uh let's see cheers gold drake even craig aka kent i was thinking of getting a medicinal weed card but it's like 1500 a month which is just fucking stupid that is ridiculous it's one of the the few sort of systems that America has in certain states that I think, yeah, we could actually do that. Um, just legalise, legalise it all. can't remember who made the point, but I posted it on Facebook, as I tend to do when I get on my uh, soapbox. But... If you legalise drugs, because we're doing beer talk now, obviously. Well, let's face it, alcohol is probably the worst sort of drug. Followed by spice, which is, you know, slap on the wrist rather than spice. Um, but if you legalise all drugs, you take the criminal element out of it. You can tax it to high heaven if you want to. 
you could create jobs. You could create a whole industry out of it. Um, you know, there's like young people who just want to have a good time and yeah, have a have the odd spliff every now and then. And then next thing you know, the if they've got a little bit too much on them, then they're fucking thrown into a system to make money. Because, you know, if prison is for profit, essentially. But, like, if you take the criminal element out of it, people aren't going to, like... There'll still be people who rob and steal because people will rob and steal because they want something. Um, how eloquent is my uh, point right now? What I'm saying is, if you legalised heroin tomorrow, not everyone is going to, the first thing they do the next day is go out and buy heroin. It's not going to happen. It's just stupid. Absolutely stupid. It could be controlled, it could be regulated. And you can be saving a lot of space uh, in prisons with people who don't deserve to be put in prison for possession or the consumption of a leaf. Ridiculous. Uh, Craig says, second jab, Peter. Yes, indeed. Had it at 10 o'clock this morning. And I tell you what, it was an absolute smokehouse, in, um, which is very odd for Wigan. There was not a man in sight in the staff, and I think probably the oldest there would have been like 21. So as a degenerate, desperate pervert, I was happy to get, I was happy to get pricked. It's the closest thing I'm ever going to get to pegging, probably. But, uh, yep. Why, why am I talking about stuff like that? Just the one arm that's stiff. We all know what you've been up to. See, I'm clever. Left arm. I mean, can be ambidextrous in that regard sometimes. Spiced up a little. But, um, yeah, I, I made sure that they were not touching this right arm. I want to make this arm ache myself. I don't need a jab. But I think Matt, Matt's clocked on to me. Uh, so stupid, 1500 a month. I can get it from my mate much cheaper. And it's probably, you know, if you've got a good mate, good quality. Got a few beers from Beer Hop the other day. Bottled in March and we're all dark beers. Very nice. Uh, yes, Peter, I agree with your views on drugs. Felt shit Monday morning after the football, says Cheshire and Brew. I can imagine you would. And I can imagine a lot of people would if i hadn't been drinking the night before till like five o'clock in the morning i probably would have had a few beers but yeah. the place i worked in here even i've like a late start so yeah there's no way i was being hungover on monday i've always said it if weed is ever legal over i'm definitely in the shop there's a lot of money to be made definitely definitely Create, create a whole legitimate industry. Wacky tobacco, I'm not saying I know a guy or even know a guy who knows a guy, but I think we all know a guy who knows a guy who may know a guy. Um, but that's only if we were ever to want to inquire, of course. Uh, let's see. May as well make it legal. Half my town smokes it in public. Heroin addicts won't buy it. It'll be too expensive. Um, and plus, the money they make can be put back into what would probably be better drug treatment programs than we've already got already. I've heard her heroin is quite Moorish. Uh, might be exact as Jaco Beer. Alcohol included, invented them. Alcohol Inc. invented them today would be legal. And then legalising cannabis makes sense, and the amount of deficit now is beyond. Is deficit now is because of C19. Definitely. Well put, Craig. 
and uh, Goldrake says, oh yes, absolutely. Cheshire Homebrew. I'm a little bit disappointed in this. It's almost got a, a character of cordial that you've put a little bit too much water in. But it's got a lovely body to it. Nice carbonation. Does have the character of like um, a vitamin D tablet dissolved in water. So that's sort of like slightly medicinal citrusy flavour. And in fact, the more I'm drinking it, the more that's becoming prominent. It's a real shame. But yeah, the Talos one was very much superior to this. Yeah, I'm not, it's not a satisfying drink at all. Um, it, could, it could be just the can. Or is it the beer itself? Um, the one from um, Marks and Spencers. That was all right. Uh, it's a little bit basic, plain Jane sort of thing. But for the price that I paid for it, not too bad. Uh, best be it just has a best before end. 13th of May 2022. So are we assuming they've put a, a year's shelf life on that? Yeah, the, the more I'm drinking it, the more I'm not liking it. That's a, a bit of a shock, that. Where the really is. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peter, what phone is that, mate? Looks like the phone I have. This is my Huawei P22, is it? I can't remember. This is, I'm using my current phone, which is my iPhone 11, uh, to do the stream. I just decided to keep this as a backup, plus it's a, it's a good way to um, have files and uh, interesting websites. Plus, it's, got, it's actually got my banking app on there because I cannot be arsed going through the rigmarole of obtaining all my login information, confirming my identity when I install the app on here. So I'll just use this. Um, what one did I have? The Huawei P20 Pro, this is, which was a great phone um, until about two weeks into buying it, dropped the phone and smashed the lens on the camera. Um, deeming this all pointless. I don't know if, how well you can see that, but it's absolutely mangled. Plus, I'm not a big fan of the oper op um, iOS or the operating operating software on this. Although, I told myself I'd never go back to iPhone. I want to done. Come back to iPhone. I was going to make a very inappropriate joke then, but I decided not to. Going on like a battered, but I don't, I don't, don't want to go down that route. Uh, let's see. Plain Jane's my local crackhead's nickname. It's also the name of the, the woman who, if you give 20 quid, she'll pretend to have a good time. I like the glass. Here's a nice glass. Thank you, Craig. I have the Wario on a nine. Yeah, same as mine. I did the same. Oof, Android is better than Apple. Uh, I think it's because I've, since having smartphones, I started off on an iPhone, went to another iPhone. I think the, that Huawei was the first one that wasn't an iPhone, plus having a, a MacBook and um, using iMacs and some of the. Uh, like After Effects and things like that, and Illustrator, you know. I've just become a bit more accustomed to um, Apple products, even though they annoy the shit out of me. Um, but the scummy side of me really wants to buy myself an iMac. But I'm trying to find a good one that does it on finance. Because fuck paying that much up front. Because, you know, when I was editing videos and stuff, I was using iMovie. So I'm really quite used to that. And then from the experience of iMovie, it sort of 
lends itself to um, After Effects and Final Cut Pro and stuff. No, no, I keep saying After Effects, it's not even After Effects, like Final Cut Pro. I prefer like Mac based software because I just find it a little bit easier to use. Uh, let's see. Uh, who are we? On a 9X, my first ever Android. I've had iPhone 2, 3, GS, 4, 5, 5S, 6S, 7, 8. I can't remember for the life of me what iPhones I've had. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got like a love hate relationship with them, to be honest. I would have Apple, but it is kind of expensive on tight arts. Yeah. That being said, I did get a good deal on this, and I was predominantly looking for something with a really good camera that I could use almost in a sort of with the right sort of attachments because um, you can get some really gorgeous lenses for your iPhone and other phone cameras. So it could be semi professional filmography if you've got all the right settings and you've got the, the right lighting. That's ironic, uh, me discussing stuff like this because have you seen? the picture quality on my reviews. I basically got it because it was like DSLR quality in a phone, even though I know there are better phones. It's a bit like the Google phone's got a really good camera. But that's important for me. It's a good camera. Uh, anyone else got... any? Anyone here going to Brew London? I'm not just wondering who's going. I think Craig might be going. Oh, he's, he's answered that question. Find my... Find MacBook in an online shop that takes PayPal. They can then you can swap payments with PayPal now. Yeah, I think that that's what I'd do um, is get get an iMac as opposed to a MacBook. Although that being said, you know it's it's on its well it's been on its last legs for about five years. I mean MacBook that I got in two thousand and eleven uh, is still working. Um, takes a little while uh, sometimes just to fucking open and close some um applications but uh it's still going strong it, it's coughing and sp you know spluttering but it's slowly going along and it's definitely definitely outstayed its uh lifespan <laughs> although if you use it without the um the adapter once you've charged it fully you get about half an hour out of it and then it's just dead. And when it is dead, it takes absolutely fucking ages for it to get enough power to turn on and then absolutely ages for it to then um, actually get up and running. So it's not ideal, but um, much like Gold Drake, I'm a tight ass, and I'd much rather spend, you know, I could probably get about 10 to 11 really good beer halls for the price of a MacBook. And I'm supposed to be doing... Yeah, we've done that one. Sounds like a nice day, mate. I like... I talked to Paul's Beer Reviews and Lord's Bruco. I know them and a few other lads we talked to are going. I shall be at uh, London Craft Beer Festival. Got me on stand. Got merch. Uh, I haven't. I'll never be in a position where I will be on any sort of panel. I will never be. I don't, I don't don't like those. I don't like those sort of like people, like the beer people on Instagram stuff who volunteer for breweries. It's there's just something really fake, shallow, and gross about that. I don't know what it is. It's the cynical side of me, but I hate seeing that. Like these really shallow beer people it's like, oh I'm volunteering for you know for like Red Church. It's like fuck off. It, the, some of the people who do them are really nice people, but I just don't like that sort of stuff. Um uh, let's see. Next year I should be going to a few beer festivals, so hopefully I can see you all at some of them. And yeah, I'm going to have a chat with John, says Craig. And the gold rate says John's real nice guy. Meeting Rasco on the Friday. Oh, very nice. That's that. That's the nice, the nicest thing about this whole stuff, isn't it? The fact that you know you create sort of like friendships. 
you forge friendships um and the community side of stuff is really really nice i like that and i've met some of the best people who you know like craig harry um you guys on the stream but I, obviously i'm talking about people i've actually met in person speak to on a daily basis you know craig harry rob paul uh james jake brett adam uh greg raggy uh i'm missing people and it's like a dean um and then it's like you guys here on the stream and james rothwell even though i've met him but i was very drunk at the time but it also, it's all coming back to me when i'm at indie man um and i've met some great people on my instagram um that horrible cunt lucy that comes round here every now and then to mention just a few so i've met some really really nice people um from doing this but anyway peter rants i love it man i'm glad you enjoy it does anyone have a favorite hop asks cheshire homebrew i'm torn between mosaic and columbus adam responds idaho seven every time See, I'm still on a bit of um, a Sabro kick at the moment, but I always go back to Citra. Always, always go back to Citra. And Craig says Rasco's a great guy. Uh, and of course, I'm going to forget the, um, like the Americans, the Canadians, the Europeans who have got to know Thomas, uh, Rod J, uh, the Canadian lot so many so many great people uh yeah you should be a toxic place but i love how the beer community get along as well i met some friends for life through beer community definitely i will definitely agree and uh i i always say it but the, these guys are, yeah there's like people in outside of this whole beer stuff who you know hold very near and dear to my heart in terms of friendships but these guys have got me through some of the shittiest times um, over the years. And I wouldn't change it for the fucking world. So, uh, massive, massive thank you to you all. No matter how big or small your role in this absurd life that I have. As I do greatly appreciate it. I really, really do. Uh, let's see. Uh, the North One Pages Project Ido 7 is in my basket for trembling madness, says Adam. Uh, Craig says, Simcoe and Amarillo, I feel Citra's changed in recent years. Interesting viewpoint. Uh, let's see. I ain't known you guys too long. Hopefully we've become closer friends and hopefully someday meet up. I very much look forward to that day, Gold Drake. Very much look forward to that. Uh, cheers, mate. We'll have a look, says Cheshire Home Brew. Can't beat a nice citra hot beer. Go ship comes to mind. That's always a good, dependable beer. Um, plus, doesn't the, not necessarily the recipe change, but the sort of, um, the variation of hops changing go ship. Or is that just sort of like one of those old wives tales, urban myths? Anyway, I digress. Speaking of Northern Monk, Adam, uh, just poured this the eternal haze double dry hop double ipa from northern monk and stick begins hazy citrusy tropical it says on the can uh, does it go into detail what hops you use i can't read that right uh mosaic citra and centennial this is what it looks like in the glass very nice very nice indeed i'll let you admire that view uh, well, I'll just quickly see what comments I've got. Had an Atom Idaho 7 IPA recently, says Matt Binks. That was really good. Favourite op for me would be Sabro or Simcoe. Yeah, Sabro, there's, when Sabro's utilised the way I want it to, I really like Sabro. I'm only down the road from where Harry is from, about 15 minutes drive. We're meeting up in Brum sometimes. That's going to be a messy one. Uh, love Ghost Ship on Cask, but the cans I've had have always been disappointing. I'd love to try Ghost Ship on Cask. God, this time last year I'd be saying, oh, I'm not missing Cask at all. 
but um, I've, I've become a bit more of a lover towards crass. Crass? Oh, I'm very crass. I'm as crass as they come. But a cask. So, lovely looking beer. Oh, gosh, that is... That sweaty sock. Edam cheese. Fucking hell, that is very cheesy. My God. That is dank. That's so dank it smells like cheese. Christ. I was not expecting that nose. A little bit of Haribo jelly sweets coming through. Oh my god, this is... Even though this is such a throwaway sort of taste note, because how am I going to gauge it? Where's the science in me legitimately saying what I'm going to say? But this is really reminded me of Stig Baguette's Amazing Haze. This is taking me back. I was talking to James about this last night, actually. This is take this the nose at least is taking me back to when we were seeing like one or two breweries in the UK and surrounding countries in Europe. When when I say surrounding countries, I mean countries in Europe. I don't know why I said surrounding countries. Like there's a direct like circle of countries who are starting to do this style of beer. But when like the whole hazy New England or as it was called then Vermont IPA was becoming a bit more popular. Yeah, you know, like cloud water in its like younger bottle days. When brews were like tr they were trying this new take on IPAs and a lot of them still had that sort of like dank resiny character of a west coast but with like this soft fruity edge and I remember my first example of what we now basically know as a an IPA even though it's forever evolving um and it was amazing haze and up to that point I'd never had an IPA like that and this for me there's a bit of onion there's a bit of garlic yeah there's like a it's like in terms of the cheese aroma now you're probably thinking why the fuck is he saying cheese that sounds disgusting but to me it's taking me back to being in Germany, going to a, you know, if Paul's still watching, he's thinking, oh, fuck, he's talking about Germany again. But going to, like, one of the sort of, like, they called it a dunt, and it was, like, a very scaled down, very regional version of something like an Oktoberfest, you know, beer tents, amusements, stalls, that sort of thing. Like a Berg sort of fest, or, you know what I mean? like a village sort of festival that they'd have a few times in the year, where you'd be able to get these massive fuck-off pretzels. And then they'd have these big, like, wheels of, like, Emmentaler and Masadama cheese, and they'd just, like, just slice some ways, Jim. You've just got, this is what it's reminding me of. And it's even got that sort of, like, like a sourdoughy bready sort of thing. But it's almost like not rested enough. That's what I say. It's like so. It's basically a cross between an Emmentaler and a Macedonian cheese, or something like a Jarlsberg. You know, it's like soft, sort of like very not neutral. But what what's the word I'm looking for? One of those like flavors that isn't really strong on its own, but work with work with other stuff, it brings it out. Sort of like very soft, nutty, gentle cheese. Raggy's thinking, what the fuck is he talking about cheese for? Uh, and I need to um, look at these comments. 
uh, Goldrick says, this is how I found all you guys through Harry's channel. It's like um, Harry is the sort of um, the alcoholic universe. Why did I stumble on my words on universe? God, I can't stop smelling this. This is wonderful. Uh, I enjoyed the bottle version. Picked up 10 kegs of it before in home bargains. Eight quid a foot. Fucking hell. God, that would have been perfect for uh, this weekend. I might go to the uh, home bargains in the concourse and see if they've got any. They won't have any mini kegs of go ship in the Skelmersdale concourse, but I'll have a look anyway. Uh, Craig says cheese and onion. It's not at that level. Cheese is in the thing you eat or smoke. I don't know what you're trying to imply there, Gold Drake, but I don't like it. I'll give the bottles a go next time I see them, says Matt. Yeah, I think it's better, but can't really comment. I haven't, I haven't had it on cast or cans, I don't think. I've been so tempted to pick up a four-pack of the cans. Actual cheese or a Savoy, says Craig. Sourdoy oi oi, says Brett. Good evening, Brett. Beardy beer is. And we've got Raggy, who says good evening. Sweaty Socks said, yeah, Matt Binks hit it on the nose. Pretty much sweaty socks. Nutty cheese I get, yeah, but I think, but I can't think what cheese it is. There's a really nice soft, it's not, I don't like soft cheese. I don't like the texture of soft cheese and that sort of stuff. But there's a really nice French cheese available in the co-op. And I think it's like a one word. Um, but again, it's like a very subtle sort of cheese where if you were to just like, you know, slice yourself off a piece and eat it, you'd be like, no, oh, that's nice. But you wouldn't get like a really strong flavour. But like just that on like a slice of like a sourdough. Love sourdough. Toasted or untoasted, doesn't really matter. And then you'd have that on it. That like combination of the sourdough and that gentle cheese just works beautifully. And then of course you can put other stuff on there, but yeah, can't remember what it is. Can't remember what it is. It's a firm cheese. And it comes in one of those, you know, where it's like a segment off of, of a wheel of cheese, and then they package it. A segment of a wheel of cheese, and then they package it. For those who are, uh, you know, sign language. I'm going to taste the, have a taste of this beer, because it's been sitting in the glass for way too long. This is good. Is this just basically Northern Monk brewing Amazing Haze with maybe a slightly higher ABV? Or is this just like reeking of Stigbergitz? A brewery who criminally, criminally underdrunk at a clueless HQ. Oh man, this is good. This is really nice. Soft, pillowy. Northern Monk doing a double IPA. Like we love Northern Monk doing a double IPA. I think there's the clear influence. Um, well, not, not influence. Because that, that would dictate... You know, that would say that Sigba Gates are completely... You know, dominated in the brewing process. That's not what I was implying, but you could definitely. I don't know. This is just reminding me of like a slightly amped up version of what I remember Amazing Haze tasting like. Even though I've only drank Amazing Haze twice in my life, and I think the second one I had was maybe a, a slightly sort of like rejigged recipe or evolved recipe. Oh, that's good. I'll get some tasting notes in a second. Uh, cheddar, cheese, bud. Exactly. I think that would be absolutely perfect right now. Uh, Comte. Comte. I think that might be the one. Let me just have a look. They might actually have it. But it's really nice. 
Yes. Fucking yes. I'm glad people actually know what they're talking about when they watch my streams. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate that. But yeah, come, come to. Come to. Is that what it is? Come to. I watched a really good French film last night, by the way. Speaking of France, racist. By um, Quentin Dupieux. Or du I can't, I never know how to pronounce his name. He's basically, some people know him as um, Monsieur Oiseau, uh, who did Flatbeat. Um, probably one of the best artists that Ed Bang Records have ever had. Second would be Sebastian. Third, we're going to go Justice. Fourth, we're going to get go DJ Maddy. But yeah, Monsieur Oiseau. Um, he also did the film Rubber. So very sort of like absurdist um, sort of style of filmmaking. But we watched, um, me and my friend Chris went to um, a preview screening of Deer Skin, which isn't, I think his latest film is Man Manubles or Manubly, I'm not sure. I don't know French, sorry, ignorant English. Um, but it's really good, and it's essentially about the film about a man who's recently divorced, and he wants to change. He wants to change his life up a bit, so he spends nearly eight grand on a deer skin jacket. Doesn't have quite enough money, but the man he's buying off doesn't care, and he also gives him a video camera. And um, basically, this guy's like sort of like living a life because he's got no money. His like ex-wife has blocked the bank account, so he blags his way of saying he's a filmmaker, <coughs> and to make sure he has a constant sort of amount of money, he gains the trust of a girl who works at a bar, but who's an editor. So he goes round, he's starting filming stuff, but his deer skin jacket starts talking to him and basically his dear his dear skin jacket's life goal and life dream is to be the only jacket in the world and then the guy proceed it's the guy who was an um the artist you know the oscar winning film from can't remember when and uh basically he he starts killing people and taking the jackets. That's all I can describe the film as, but so much more happens, and it was really fucking funny and really well made. It had some really like sort of like classic gothic horror tropes to it, which I think were like more tongue in cheek, but but I know that's not French, but bellissimo. I know it's Italian. But uh, I thought it was pretty apt. I don't often come across as like an ignorant racist sometimes. And uh, you'd think that you'd be able to manage me a little bit better. What's that? Ten years. That's all I'll give him. But um, yeah. Anyway, so that was a good film. But yeah, come to. Love so I think I've still got some left, so I might um gorge on that in a little bit. Uh let's see it. I love soft cheese. The one for white trose is awesome. It's in a solid state. Weren't they like a like a house music? Duo or something, I don't know. Shit joke, shit joke. Move on. It's in a solid state, refrigerated, and as it warms up it gets so gooey and creamy. Ugh. No, thank you. Uh, that would be brie you're on about. Yeah, just any sort of cheese like that. I just... Uh, it's like... Don't get me wrong, I like cheese. I like a cheese butty, cheese and ham butty. I like grated cheese. You know, I like a lasagna with a little bit of cheese. Bread and cheese, cured meats and cheese. But I'm not one of these people who likes loads of cheese on stuff. And one thing that goes through me so much is, I don't know what cheese it is, but it's like very popular 
for some restaurants for them to go around with the wheel of cheese with one of the slices and just like slice off but it was all like goo gooey as it was sliced i was like that's fucking disgusting that's like you've ripped off like a wart or something and it's oozing out so i don't like those sort of soft cheeses i just can't do it i mean cream cheese i like don't get me wrong i like cream cheese but yeah just just there's some cheese and i'm like what the fuck it's, it's awful but if you like that you like that and i'm not here to judge I should have said Comte is the French cheese I think you're on about. Uh, cheers, guys. Sorry, I mean savoury, says Craig. Matt says, I'm glad me working on the deli in Morrison's for the past 20 years hasn't been for nothing. I was beginning to think I'd piss my life away. You say that, but I'd like to think that um, at the end of the sort of day, if you're on shift and there's, there's some stock that the... Yeah, we can't really sell it. But we're going to throw it away. I'd like to think that you'd be able to help yourself to some of the uh, the strag straggly ends. Straggly ends. Uh, to the sort of um, brains turning off. God, that's really nice, by the way. Um, but I'd like to think your work would let you sort of like take some of that home. So I'd, I'd like to think it's got its perks. I mean, I'm working in a call centre at the age of 32, so if you want to talk about pissing your life away. But um, we won't get into that. Uh, Gold Drake's laughing face. Uh, Craig says, they keep showing my hometown on TV at the Open from Royal St. George's. Today, it's odd seeing it on a sports channel. I'm trying to think of like a crime watch joke, but I don't want to. I'm not talking to myself. It's my producer right there. I like cheese. Do you mean raclette? Yes. Um, although I do like using those um, those raclette grill things that you put on the table. And then everyone has their own little white shelf and then you grill the stuff on top. Uh, totally against fondue. Cheese fondue, by the way. That is just fucking disgusting. That can go right in the fucking sea, as far as I'm concerned. I don't... Why would you want cheese? Like, I say, I was going to say, why would you like oozy cheese? But I do like a, a nice cheese toasty where it sort of like dribbles outside. But I like when it sort of like firms up. I'm not the biggest fan of macaroni and cheese, though. I just find it a bit... Boring. Um, don't like cheese sauce. Why do you need a cheese sauce? Really? If you like it, you like it. But look at it's always the heat lamp and paddle. Not sure what the grill one is. Yeah, basically you can buy. We got awesome little because I was fascinated by one that I had when I was uh, living in Germany. So basically, you get the little paddle, so it's heat on the top so obviously you can put your whatever you want and then the cheese on top and then you can pull it out but on the top of it there's actually like a grill so you can put like meats on there and like grilled veg it's really good it's really really good and we bought one and the only thing we used it for was a fucking fry up because the great thing is because it's such like a communal thing And you're constantly putting like your your meats on there to cook them. The amount of juices that are left over for you to just sop up with some bread. It's what I like about doing bacon under the grill with a bit of tin foil on the, the, the base of the, the grill pan is all that fat that like pretty much basically burns and is collected on the bottom. Just getting your finger. Scraping it along. Probably explains why I've got these. I'm just... Don't throw away your meat juices. That annoys me, by the way. Stick on culinary rants with the glueless drinker. When you've got, like, your joints in the oven, 
No, not that sort of joint. Gold Drake. Oh, but I thought Adam was saying bye with a heart, but he's saying something infinitely worse. And heart is hearting Brie. So I think we should all... Uh, I think I, if I had moderators, I'd ask them to remove him from the chat because that's just... What you've just said there, Adam, is absolutely awful. And it's it's distracting me so much, I can't remember what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Meat juices. It's It's like... One of those things, you know, when they put, like, warnings on, like, a, a, like an egg carton, it says, warning contains eggs. I think this should be the same for when people are doing the roast dinners, and they've got the, the joint of meat in the oven, and then they discard the meat juices when they finished. And I'm like, you've just got rid of the foundations of a beautiful gravy or sauce. You absolute mad person. That's annoyed me thinking about that. And like when you're boiling vegetables, <laughs> meat all about vegetables. When you're boiling vegetables, you keep the water that you boil them to the side because that you can make a nice simple stock with that. Plus, all the goodness from the vegetables is pretty much in that water. Now. If you're taking health advice from me and thinking, oh, God, he's right, I think you're fucked, quite frankly. But I jest, of course. So I've got more comments then. Uh, Goldrake. Has Goldrake left? He, he has. I know. I was too busy ranting to say goodbye. But if you're watching this afterwards or if you're still here in the background... Enjoy your food. Uh, let's see. Uh, Craig says, in Madeira, they carve out the bread in, to a blue mat and fill it with brie and pomegranate segments. Put the bread back on top, then put it in the oven for 20 minutes. That's one of those things where I personally think that's absolutely fucking foul sounding. But I could imagine that if you're into that is so divine. So I've got to respect that. Uh, let's see. Cheers, guys. Going to eat now. See you later. Uh, cheese toasty dunked in tomato soup. Best thing ever. That sounds good. Because tomato soup is usually boring on its own. But I do find tomato soup is the best soup to dunk in. Either that or cream of chicken. Um, which, by the way, if you want a really nice toasty, make sure you've got a toasty maker. Get yourself some beef mints. Season it quite liberally and then make sure it's kind of like at room temperature and then get your slices of bread and on one of them put a nice generous layer of the raw mince filling. Put your other, you know how to use a toasty maker, but I swear to God because the sort of layer is going to be quite condensed anyway. It makes a really, really nice toasty. And the great thing is, because of like the, the fat that comes out of it, but it's also being grilled on a relatively high temperature, it will run out to the sides, but it'll crystallise. So you'll have a really nice sort of like dark, intense, like beef juice dripping sort of uh, thing going on with your toasty. That with some salsa. My God. If you feel confident to use a, a toasty maker and using raw mints, a perfect, perfect dish to have when you've just come in from the pub or first thing when you wake up. It sounds awful, 
uh, just basically spreading raw mints on bread. But making a raw <laughs> raw mince toasty, making a mince meat toasty, it's just fucking beautiful. You won't regret it. It's wonderful, says Craig. Uh, not a massive fan of pomegranate, says Adam. But Brie, heart, we've already discussed that. Heart attack waiting to happen. Uh, just said haggis cooked in chorizo oil, very middle class. Oh, you must be one of those um, insert posh part of Scotland here people. Uh, let's see. Exactly, bro. Relax, bro. Says exactly, bro. Even relax, bro. Uh, says fatty flavor. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. Um, meat juices, says Craig. I don't know if that's uh, if he's just being really immature. Um, but we all like some juicy meat every now and then. Uh, Peter, did you hear the Joe Rogan podcast with that guy make things out of bear meat grease? No, I didn't, but that sounds interesting. Uh, Ace Ventura, evening, says Penguin Wrestling, Penguin Wrestling is a massive turn on. You've come to the right place, sir. Uh, let's see. Cook roast potatoes in the juice. Yes. If you don't want to make a gravy with it, use it as a form of dripping. My God. When, if you were to, like, do a roast dinner properly, there's no other meal that would come close. But then again, if you have a bad roast dinner, you have a bad roast dinner. I'm fucking starving now because you cunts. Even though I think I started this discussion. Haggis and Chorizo sounds amazing. It certainly does. Uh, Pub Crawl Channel. Good evening or good morning. Because I think you're based in Australia. It says, oh man, just got to work. Have to wait eight hours for a beer. LOL, cheers. I'm sure those eight hours will flow by. Absolutely flow by. And that wasn't a smug sip, by the way. Or I, I didn't intend it to be. I waste nothing, mate. Exactly. Exactly. You've got to be... It's not even being thrifty. It's just being practical. Just giving the brew by numbers number five taste. It's... I think I'm getting the residual flavours from that, but just mixing into the actual liquid of that. That's not scientific, so don't quote me on that at all. I always have duck pancakes a week before Christmas and save duck fat in the fridge for the roast potatoes for Christmas dinner. Blend it. My God, Adam, thank God you can't see my pants right now. That sound. Do you know what? I genuinely love hearing people's sort of um, little things that they do like that. That warms the shackles of my heart so much. That just sounds fucking glorious. And it's just a simple little sort of like life hack. Wonderful stuff. Should have basted it more, says Matt. Relax, blow. Blow. <laughs> Bro gives a thumbs up. Uh, Peter talking about his juices. Oh, my juices are certainly flowing after uh, Adam's little comment there. Jesus. That's naughty, that. Pure filth. Must go, bro. See you next time. Evening, bro. Well, evening, relax, bro. Bro. God, I'm so white. Uh, let's see. Raggy says, Stilton cheese, yummy. And damn, I was watching 20 minutes behind. What the fuck? I don't think the conversation has uh, evolved much since then, but thank you for joining and good evening. Uh, well, have a, a good good one. Relax, bro. Some new names. Are names I've not seen for ages in here tonight. I had a really good stream the other night as well. That was really good. But yeah, I tell you what. In terms of supermarket beers, that is absolutely fantastic. It really, really is. I've bought beers from northern monk directly um 
a couple of months ago that weren't tasting anywhere near as good as this. And I'm so looking forward to that can of faith, uh, which I'm going to save for, for Saturday afternoon, <coughs> as I've got a couple of um, Paolanas, and um, I can't remember what what is the brewery that does it. Tetley's, that Tetley's Lager, which I had a bottle um, a while ago, and I really, really enjoyed. But yeah, this is uh, this is fantastic. Um, Eternal Haze from Northern Monk and Stigbegeets. The fact that we're getting quality like this in the supermarkets is... It's a damn good thing. It really, really is. And for those who didn't see it earlier... Um, yeah, this was just a little bit disappointing. Not bad, not awful. But, um, you, you know, you come to expect a little bit better uh, from a brewery like that. Not their usual quality, shall we say. Because I don't want to throw shade on them, because I think they're a fantastic brewery. And uh, one of the best... Um, God, it's like I'm going to compile a fucking top ten or top five of this, but one of the best breweries I've bought from directly. Which I think you can still find some deals uh, with Brew by Numbers on places like Grouper. Where you get a nice mixed crate for a good price. It's always worth looking out for stuff like that. But yeah, thank you for joining me, by the way, folks, uh, for this last minute impromptu live stream. I was just a little bit bored. Uh, hopefully, I don't regret having a few beers after having my second injection, though, but. Uh, I'm not talking about that in general. I'm talking about my lip fillers, you know, because I'm I live near near I live near Scouseland, so of course fake lips. Liverpool, fake lips, maxi dresses. That's all you need to know. Brew by number, great beer, great prices, but terrible customer service. Yes, Adam had quite an experience. Um, I ate that. I just. The, the annoying thing is, right, someone's being paid an all right wage to deal with these sorts of things. And of course, you're going to get some sort of like breweries who are, the staff level's going to be really low. So you're going to have people who are going to be two, you know, doing two or three jobs. But brewery by numbers aren't exactly a small brewery. And I'd imagine they've got quite a big team of people. So to not be able to keep on top of emails and like social media i think that's a little bit wank but thankfully they brew good beer so we don't care well we do because we want good customer service at the end of the day might do a stream tomorrow night um i may join you on that one because i've got um a rotated weekend off found out there is a JW Lee's pub in Down Holland. Ooh. I have to look into this. I love that. You've got Up Holland, Down Holland. Down Holland is a civil parish in Lancashire, England, on the West Lancashire coastal plain. The population, as the 2011 census, was 913. I love that we do censuses every year but when you look at like what's supposed to be up-to-date information they always quote the population from like four years ago surely it doesn't take that long to update and collate information do you know what the pub's called I'm literally googling Down Holland J.W. Lee's pub. No, it's just giving me the. Is that the Sheldon Arms in no, Ashton? No, I don't know. I don't know. It's called the Ship. Oh, okay. I'm going to try and get to brew my numbers on Saturday or do the kernel and announce back like Craig did the other week. I would absolutely adore 
going to uh, the Colonel. That's one of those places where, even I probably wouldn't do it when I'm actually there, but that's one of those places beforehand I'd be like, I want to try a measure of every draft and uh, keg and cask beer you have available. I want to get the full experience of the Colonel. You can take that sentence out of context. Well, we're getting into the frigging in the rigging territory, but um, yeah, that that's one of those places I just wanna I wanna spend a good few hours in a place like the Colonel. Hate to break too, but census is every ten years. Two thousand nine should be soon become. But you know what I mean, though. You'd think they'd have a better idea of population numbers. Mind you, it's like... I don't know why... I, I don't know. I don't know. I just realised how fucking stupid I sound right now. The ship pub in Down Holland. Shipping. Six Rosemary Lane. Uh, oh, looks absolutely gorgeous in there. Mm, the pipe. I'm not going to lie, though. Looking at the photos. I'm not very satisfied with the uh, the look of the uh, the vegetables with that anemic pie. Have I been there? Yeah, I've, I've been there like about pff, more than seven years ago. Which was clearly a long time before um, I was really into to be like I am now. I was probably about six stone lighter as well. No, actually, I think I was a lot fatter before I was drinking. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, that 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 food looks nice. That that's a that's a handsome looking selection of food there. Although that being said, the loaded fries look a little bit uninspired. But, you know, you don't really want to base your opinion on a place just on the loaded fries. Um, why has my voice gone really quiet? I don't know. I'm going to be wrapping this up soon. Uh, let's see. It's hard to, it's it's hard on pop population numbers because you need quite a period of time to account for natural change and migration, economic changes. Very fair point. Um, get some pizza juices on it. Are we talking about the population, or are we talked about um, the pie? Yeah, there wasn't much gravy on the the pie and veg, was there? No, 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 no. Not very northern at all. Uh, one hour and 30 minutes walk from Olmskirk. I'll get the Halsall bus and go the Scaronsons head on route. Are we sort of um, unintentionally putting a little bit of a, a beer trip in place? Which we do really need to do, Adam. We need to get some sort of a beer trip sorted. Anemic pie with a side of pita juice. Sounds like a good Friday night to me. But um, yeah, Adam, we, we do need to get something booked to uh, make up for my uh, flouncing on our Southport trip. Because oh, Peter's a little bit too hungover. I, well, I, I was. But the room was literally spinning when I stood up that next day. I knew it was a bad idea as it was going on. But, you know, peer pressure from people in your immediate vicinity that's my that's my weak point 
I get talked into doing so many things. But such is life. But I'd like to think our uh, <laughs> gathering in Liverpool more than made up for that. And um, yeah, we've got we've got years to have plenty of beer trips. Not intentionally, but bus plus drunk Peter may not be the best idea. True, true, true. Public transport and uh, alcohol. Can get a little bit ugly. He says that as he slobbers beer down his double chin. Oh. Yeah, I'm still very, very honest. Unimpressed by the brew by numbers. That that's I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's 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 a crap beer. And I'm not too sure. If that's because I'd imagine they'd release like a version like that themselves directly through their web shop and then through you know bottle shops and stuff, or is this like a recipe exclusively for Tesco's? I don't know, but um, yeah, but this is the thing, right? With some of these, this is one of the things, um, a negative about supermarket beers is. People are like, oh, that's something new. I'll try that. And if it tastes bad, even from a brewery that's known to produce such high quality beer, and then someone who's trying to get into it tries something like this, it's not going to give Brew by Numbers a good first impression. And that's, I suppose, that sort of like, I wouldn't say it's a risk for these brewers because. Brew by numbers isn't going to suffer from the reputation they get from the stuff they've got in supermarkets. Because we know, as people who are into this, that brew by numbers are one of London's, you know, best breweries, really. I've not really got too many negative things to say. Their utilisation of coffee in beers is... And it's something that you can rarely see they take seriously. Amongst other things and other styles, but... So this, to me, it's not the best sort of um, introduction to Brew by Numbers. It might get you introduced to the name, and hopefully that gets people thinking, oh, well, yeah, that wasn't bad. Let's see what else they produce. But let's be honest, in this day and age, not many people will have a mediocre experience and think, I'll give this person this brewery, whatever, whatever, whatever part of the industry, or whatever industry it is. Not a lot of people have that sort of, do you know what, this wasn't too bad? I'll give it, I'll give this a try. A lot of people will go, do you know what, didn't like this, moving on, they're obviously someone to avoid. But then again, I don't think Brew by Numbers have been really hurt too much by what's gone on in this last year and a half. I think they're one of the, thankfully, uh, many breweries who have sort of out, sort of lasted through what we've been going through and the hospitality industry is going through. Um, but yeah, that that's just not a good representation of Brew by Numbers. It really, really isn't. Well, that can at least. Not intentionally, but being yeah, we told you the only five one was better. Um, I did enjoy that. Um, I picked up a can of that for my bus ride home from a, uh, a cinema viewing in Southport uh, a couple of months ago. Exclusive hop combo for Tesco. Oh, okay. I just buy the Polly's Moon record on m and I didn't know they had Polly's in m and uh, Crap, pal, got a can for you as my local m has expanded and now stock it. Ah, okay. Polly is in Marks and Spencers. Who the funky? But um, yeah. I'll tell you what, Tesco's to me. Um, I mean, yeah, some of the other supermarkets might have like one or two more exciting beers compared to some other supermarkets. But I think if you've got a good Tesco's, 
you've got a good chance of having a really good selection of not only like craft stuff like this, but also an interesting real ale selection and bottled selection as well. Uh, because bottles seem to get looked over um, or overlooked, not looked over. Uh, bottles, especially 500ml bottles, do seem to get a little bit overlooked on the supermarket shelves sometimes. But I think Tesco's is sort of like your safe bet for a... You're going to have some good beers for your barbecue. Do you know what I mean? Um, but then again, like Sainsbury's might have one or two beers that are like fucking amazing, as might Marks and Spencer's, as might Morrison's, as might, well, not Asda. Um, but do you know what I mean? And like Booths, that sort of stuff. Booths, again, I think that's it. They've got a good selection. And the fact that it's a supermarket that stocks Augustina, the best lager in the world. But um, I don't have a one of those farmer's jackets and uh, my wife's not 20 years younger than me so don't really shop there that much why would you generalize about one of your favorite places to buy food i think that says more about you being a sort of like a closet tory than anything else i mean i look like the fucking leader of the tories but that's something that's got me like free taxi rides and free entries into clubs in the past so not going to complain too much. And one of my proudest moments was when, um, what what was it when Rangers were in Manchester for a final? And I remember a massive group of Rangers fans, as I was walking past, started chanting something along the lines of, there's only one Boris Johnson, there's only one. Boris Johnson and I was like cool and uh, Polly's in m &S, Craig with his uh, Sherlock monocle yeah 5% pale it's banging says Adam and uh, morning all morning Sam from down under don't do an Australian accent you stupid prick um, apologies Sam Good morning to you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've got a prosperous day ahead of you. You on Friday or Thursday? Breakfast beer? Asks Adam. I'm just going to get that. Don't talk and try and pour your beer at the same time. It doesn't really work. I'm actually rarely tempted. If I ever have a few days spare when I'm not working in a row, just to be, well, once I've, I actually start paying for StreamYard, I think it'd be sort of like a good sort of like um, social experiment, but it could also be classed as like a modern art piece. Just stream me just drinking throughout the day. And becoming more and more of a mess as the stream can as the stream goes on. I think that'll be quite an interesting um, video, and you can hear me slurring my words and um, shouting obscenities and uh, doing things that I shouldn't do on camera. Because uh, I feel like that's what I'm doing. I'm just people are watching me drink essentially, but I'm not actually drinking. And uh, Gold Drake is back. Uh, Friday morning smoko at work, mate. Coffee. Sensible, Sam. I like it. Cheers, Sam, mate. Goldrake is back. We're back in bloody lockdown. So angry. I didn't know that. I didn't know Australia had been put back into lockdown. Fish and chips was lovely. The Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is lovely too. Glad you enjoyed it. Was that um, chippy fish and chips or homemade fish and chips? Hi, Craig. You doing a... Friday Night Live, asks Sam. Sam, are you from Australia, mate? So asks Goldrake, and Sam promptly replies. And then Adam says, yeah, our Australian office at work said about local lockdown, they're trying to escape the ta Tasmanian 
to the Tasmanian Satellite Office. And have we ventured into an Australian sci-fi film? Yeah, was thinking about it tomorrow. Nah, it's them Harry Ramsdens from Iceland. They're quite nice. I really want to try that range. I've never actually been to like a Harry Ramsdens sort of place before. Um, mainly because we've actually got a couple of good chippies nearby. Um, I'm sure Adam will be able to uh, recommend some chippies as well. But we've got, well, there's going to be three, no, four that I'm going to mention. Uh, Tannos Chippy, that's always a good shout, but you've got to walk to and through Tannos, which is never a fun thing. Um, there's the Connie Chippy, which I've got a massive soft spot for. Always reminds me of um, getting a chippy. After you've been to the Nybevan swim and baths labour. And there's a whole green chippy. Which I think is it called the good catch. And then there's a chippy in Billinge. Near to Upholland High School. Called the running horses. So there's four good chippies. I've heard kick green chippy is quite good. Um, there's, there's a chippy in Ormskirk. I think me and Adam were talking about it. It's sort of got like a, a Greek mythological name. That's a good chippy. Don't like the onion gravy though. Um, and if you want to go into Liverpool, Lobster Pot. Again, another place we talked about uh, while we were in Liverpool. But um, yeah, I think the North... Some people shit on the North. But we get better quality fish and chips... At better prices than all of you southern poncy arseholes who are paying 12 quid for a fish and chips. You're not arseholes, I love you. Acropolis, that's the one. And Matt Bacon says he's off to bed. Good evening, Matt. But good evening. Good night, Matt. Sleep well. Um, I tried to say that without it sounding creepy, but it is me. Um, yeah, I think about tomorrow. Yes, yeah, Sam, my family in Australia too. They locked back down after like two cases. Ridiculous. Uh, Sam says, I'll definitely join you guys for beers. Can't do anything else. Stuck at home alone. Just drink and wank. And that's pretty much all you can do. Uh, unless you've got about half so you can upgrade your wank to full intercourse but not everyone's in such a blessed situation nowadays are they some of these things that come out my mouth when i don't think about what i'm gonna say you need to do a better job i'm paying you too much uh let's see now satellite office is a polite way of saying a temporary office in the middle of nowhere so is that every office space in Skelmersdale then God, I'm funny, I'm funny then fist bump yeah I missed and hit the door, it's like you're not even here um, chippies carpenters bit of southern twang there from Cray, Acropolis and Ormskirk that spice also comes off. Best gravy this side of the pen pennies. Um, but the chips are okay. I actually quite like the chips from Acropolis. But to be honest, every time we've had Acropolis, I've been a bit pissed. Uh, Craig says, cheers, Matt. And then Goldrake says, although I have a nice place in North Wales too, the chippy there are great. Very nice. What place is that? I'll tell you what, I've had really nice uh, fish and chips in the Lake District. There's something really satisfying about a good fish and chips. Uh, let's see. Fish and chips with salt and vinegar, nothing else. Very much agree. But what I will say is, and I don't know if this clap is going to be still deserved, 
I do like to have my pot of gravy on the side, so if I want to, I can always do a dip. But yeah, lashings of salt and vinegar, please. Back to work, late lad, says Sam. Have a good one, Sam. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Premier One is McGull's best pie dinner in Liverpool. Oh, colour me intrigued, Adam. A pie dinner. Uh, talking to his producer, yeah, this, you can't hear him because voice is in the head. My family have a sort to get away home in North Wales. Ah, I see. Uh, mushy peas and curry sauce and meh, chips and gravy is where it's at. Yeah, if you can't get chips and gravy right, then shut your shop. Um, that to me is like the fundamentals of a good fish and chips. I mean, of course, you've got to have good fish, good quality fish cooked well. I know that, but to me, I don't always have to have fish. I just, there's something really satisfying about just getting chips and gravy. Especially if you're walking somewhere. Be yeah, at whole green chippy in a pond. Always reminds me around Christmas time. Me and my mum, for some reason, we just walk up to the chippy. You've got Rathbone's Bakery across the road, which do fantastic meat pies, by the way. Um, and what we would do is, around Christmas time, we'd walk all the way up there. I mean, sometimes we'd go to like the, my granddad's grave on that day, if we've not already been to put like flowers. Isn't it weird how you you will put flowers on a grave for Christmas? As if the person's gonna go, oh well haven't you made it look lovely? Do you know what I mean? Um, it, it's absurd isn't it when you really think about people decorating graveyards? But it's better than people fucking pushing over gravestones. Infinitely better than that. Um, I can't fucking stand people who do shit like that defacing graves as well it's like what the fuck but at the same time it, it i don't know it's 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 a bit surreal yeah if you really think about it, it's really quite weird our relationship with graveyards i'm trying to think of so many inappropriate jokes but i don't i really don't want to um but yeah, we'd, so we'd sort of like interject it with that. But sometimes we just thought, we'll just walk up to Tall Green Chippy and on the walk back have our chips as we walk. There's something so satisfying. Um, like when I was younger, mum and dad, we'd go again, Tall Green Chippy, just because it's there. And Adam's very familiar with the beacon. And what we'd do is we'd get our fish and chips on like a Friday evening. Drive down to the beacon, park up, eat our fish and you know, eat our fish and chips in the car. Sometimes we, you know, sit outside if it was a nice day. Sometimes um, my dad would think it'd be really funny if I was to hold on to the uh, the bonnet of the car as he drove round the car park a little bit. It's sort of like that. Oh, we we were covered in mud all the time. With our open sores, and we were fine, you know, like with a scratch in the side of the face. Life was, life was simpler then, without all of this health and safety nonsense. Nonsense. I'm getting that thing again where the dust in this area is causing me to be congested, and that was a very inappropriate joke. I do apologise. Um, well, it's not my fault if you're offended. That's down to you, but um. Wholesome memories right now. How dare you? Um, so basically, yeah, we just park up and we'd have a walk around the beacon, go to like the abandoned mill where I got the fright in my life, where I turn around. Mum and dad have disappeared because they've run away to hide on me for a joke after we'd just been talking about the headless horseman whose ghost is supposedly what, <laughs> running, <laughs> galloping around. Um, no, it wasn't a headless horseman. That's. What that's John Depp, isn't it? Really, I know it's based on a real story, but yeah, there's um, there's like the highwayman whose uh, grave he's got like an unmarked grave in like the top of Hall Green, 
Um, a local history is on a strong point, so don't expect any sort of like correct names or historical references, but fuck it, it is what it is. But yeah, apparently he's supposed to be galloping, uh, well, that's what they told me at the time, galloping round on his horse, like the ghost of him. And uh, yeah, it was pitch black after we'd um, had our chippy tea and walk on a winter afternoon. And we're having a nice walk, just, yeah, it's me, my mum and dad. And I run off ahead, because, you know, you were a kid. Turned around, fucking disappeared. And I swear to God, I heard horses' hooves. But I didn't, because ghosts don't exist. And it was just my mind playing tricks on me. And it's been proven, scientifically proven, Richard Dawkins talked about this. If you get so much as, like, a little bit of air or wind, like, blowing through, like, a keyhole, there's always a chance it's going to generate a sound. So ghosts don't exist. There's no such thing as paranormal. It's all bullshit. But am I still scared? Yes. To the point where I will run up the stairs because... There's the irrational fear that someone in between the banisters is going to grab my foot. And I'm 32 years old, still have that irrational fear. But it is what it is. It's amazing how your mind, even you could have the most rational, like intelligent brain, but one stupid little idea or just concept can completely throw you off. To the point where I'm literally running upstairs with my eyes closed, just in case, after I've been grabbed by, like, a, a deity um, on my walk upstairs in the middle of fucking Skelmersdale. And then, as I'm running upstairs, a ghost at the hallway is going to stare me down. Do you know what I mean? It's weird, isn't it? How you, your mind can play tricks on you. God, it's like I'm exposing my inner fears. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm definitely going to have to uh, end the stream in a, in a few minutes. Uh, I told Mr. Producer, our fans got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mush peas, curry sauce, our oh, meh, chicken grains, where's that? Gold rake, do you mean on Dunno Pier? I had fish and chips tonight, funny enough, with curry sauce, was great. Great, curry sauce in the south, what? I thought gravy and curry. Sauce were banned. <laughs> and so, as you hit the Watford Gap, Lando knows about 40 minutes from my place in Wales. I go there frequently. Uh, little do you know, says Craig with a laughing face. Very ominous. Can't stand curry sauce, for honest. It depends what sort of curry sauce for me. What about aliens? Aliens exist. They've got to. But... Are they rarely aliens, or are we the aliens? Because that's the thing I don't get right. We have this sort of, like, attitude that any other sort of life form out there is an alien. I mean, I know it's because it's alien defined. You know, alien doesn't always have to mean aliens. You know, you could be an alien if you're someone living in one country from one country living in another, in another, in another country, that you're an alien. Um, but yeah, this that was a stupid point to make. Just ignore the last twenty seconds of what I've just said. But there's got to be life forms out there. If you've got an infinite galaxy or infinite amount of galaxies, there's got to be some form of life form much more intelligent than us doesn't take much let's be honest but yeah do i think we're going to be like instantly took over and you know all probed and independence day style destruction no but there's got to be um intelligent life out there and maybe they don't want to present themselves maybe they're not as curious as we are oh we've got to get up into space why well, richard branson I'm going into space with that shitty looking kitchen cabinets in the mansion. Prick. 
Um, but yeah, that's my thought on aliens. There's got to be, there's got to be much more intelligent life out there if we live in an infinite. If there's infinite amount, do you know what I mean? It's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no Neil deGrasse Tyson. Close, but no cigar. Uh, oh, hip hop chip shop in Manchester is a shout. Yes, I've heard a lot of fuss about them. There's a really good chip in Manchester. I can't remember the name of it. Um, I think it's on the same road that Afflex is, or um, not Afflex, as Afflex is building it's on technically three roads. It's got like there's a betting shop, and I think there's an Oxfam. It's got a blue like facade at the front. But yeah, um, hip hop chip shop I've heard a lot about, and Chish and Fip as well. I've heard they're pretty good. Uh, I generally just cover my chips and mayonnaise called Drake, but fancied something different. Can't can't go wrong with that. Are there are any things that are unexplained, but ghosts are not one of them. Very true. Once this chippy and Albert docks, before that was like fourteen pound fish and chips. Madness, but it was nice. Uh, there's definitely got to be something else out there. Space is massive. Excellently poor Peter. Uh, I can't remember what I said. It was probably stupid, but thank you. And damn, still on its fair play. Yeah, who'd have thought I'd be able to uh, keep an audience of more than one person? Uh, nice one, Craig. Sorry, didn't see your comment. Well, anyway, folks, um, I've come to the end of this mighty fine supermarket ale. And it has to be because it's got stick baguettes in there and I need to buy more of their beers. I've had a really good West Coast. I had a few good beers because that uh, <laughs> Rob from Hop Scene managed to get me on sort of like a, a mailing list for an events sort of company. And Ply in Manchester, who do some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life, by the way. Um, we're doing an event showcasing artwork by like Carl Grandin and Casper Liedert and uh, the guys who do the work for Brewski and um, Stig Bigates. And uh, they were doing like an event in this pizza place in Manchester Ply uh, where they were doing like an Omnipot. Well, obviously, Omnipot, I mentioned Carl Grandin, um, where they were doing a few beers. Um, I had, was it Anagram? on draft and that was beautiful um and they also did like a, a swedish meatball pizza but they'd ran out by the time they got there and uh had some fantastic stick baguettes beers there and i've never really bought anything else from them which is a real shame because they were my sort of gateway to the new england slash vermont ipa craze that's become the norm now you know who remembers when IPAs were actually really exciting because it was new that this new way of brewing IPAs which have actually been brewed for a while and uh, it sort of like settled as this is what we expect from a pale ale, an IPA a double IPA and a triple IPA and it's like oh exciting because there's a little bit of caramel flavour in an IPA again um, it's weird isn't it and um, I think we've sort of like settled on what people will now consider IPAs. Nice stream, so always mate. See you guys soon. Is Bundabus worth going in Manchester? I've never had the food in Bundabus. Um, I'd, I'd imagine they're still serving food, even though they're the brewery now for Bundabus. Um, but I've been there, great tap selection. And I'm sure. Um, Harry and Adam will agree that if you want to be stuffed, um, then Bundabust is uh, a good place to go. I want to try their okra fries. I really want to try their okra fries and that um, potato burger thing that um, apparently really stuffed Harry. I'd like to stuff Harry. I know they did in his hotel room, but uh, that's another story. I mean, sleepwalking and agreeing is still consent, isn't it? I don't know. Don't make up the rules. Anyway, so on that bombshell, but yeah, I would say Bundabust is definitely worth going to.
and I'd be happy to go to Bundabust on the Sunday because I've not been to Bundabust for ages. Anyway, folks, I'm going to cut this off now. Um, I think the effects of my vaccine have made me very tired all of a sudden. It's got nothing to do with the alcohol, obviously. Uh, it's very near my hotel. Oh, definitely. Definitely worth a punt if it's uh, close to your hotel. A lovely place as well they've got there. I really want to try the stuff that they're actually brewing as well. That sort of like chai ginger porter. Very intrigued by that. Even though both Harry and Adam swerved Bundabust's own beers because they're, they're too fucking snobbish. Um, nah, they're not. They're, they're good guys. Uh, and they like what they like and they don't like what they don't like. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. I won't have a bad word said about either of those wonderful folks. And I'll have no bad words said about anybody who's watching this live stream. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, my nose is getting really, really blocked. Uh, there are so they're actually pouring beers at the festival as well, or are they, or do they have like a food stand? Quite intrigued. Um, I'm really trying best to see if I can get Saturday, um, but it is looking like I might only be able to do a full day on Sunday. Um, I mean, I could meet you on meet you and Adam on Saturday evening, even though I think the festival finishes at eleven o'clock. It's not like I've got nothing to do in Manchester until 11 o'clock. Um, and then I can crash with Adam and then we can have a full day the following day. Um, and maybe Rob will be around as well because I know he's going to the Saturday session. Anyway, we shall arrange that, but I will definitely be in Manchester at some point this coming weekend because I will have been paid, which is always a good sign. Anyway, thank you so much uh, for everyone who's joined, not only joined this uh, impromptu last minute, no sort of theme live stream, but also who's stuck around, who's commented, love the engagement. Um, it's definitely given me something to do on a, on a boring Thursday evening. Um, there's better ways to spend Thursday evening after just having a second prick in your arm. It's better you're on than the mouth, I suppose, but hey ho. Um, yeah, what the fuck am I talking about? What the fuck am I talking about? That's for gold rate. Yeah, yeah. You'll like that. You'll like that. Anyway, cheers for watching, folks. Um, you all take care. Um, and if Craig is doing a live stream tomorrow, you'll probably see me there as well. And I think on Saturday, if the weather does hold up like the saying it does, gonna have a barbecue, gonna have a few beers got some nice lagers and i've got no fiends um fuck off Pete, you stupid prick anyway cheers for watching folks don't know why you sit around and watch me talking shit on a live stream but i do appreciate it you all take care um have a good weekend if i don't speak to you guys until then um see you later gold drake always a pleasure my friend and uh, i'm very jealous that you've actually had fish and chips because i'm really fucking hungry right now I'm really fucking hungry all the time. Have you seen the size of me? Well, Adam and Harry have. Jesus Christ, I fucking filled out those dungarees. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, self-deprecation. If you can't take piss out yourself, what you doing? Crystal ear impression. Anyway, cheers for watching. I'm gasping for a cigarette, so I'm going to end this uh, stream now. <laughs> You'll take care. Uh, stay safe. And... Uh, I'll see you when I see you. Bye.